aldehydes in perfumery. It's a term you've probably heard thrown around a lot, especially if you're into perfumes, but it's also something that not many people actually know what are. Now, aldehydes are quite simply a chemical class of molecules, and these molecules are used as synthetic ingredients to make perfumes. And a lot of molecules actually fit into this aldehyde categorization. Things like triplal, a leafy green smell, or helianal, a watery kind of aquatic smell, and even vanillin, that famous synthetic molecule which is just about used in every single vanilla flavoring and perfume ever made. So then what technically constitutes an aldehyde? Well, it's really quite simple. If you go and look at the molecule, an aldehyde occurs when you have some kind of carbon skeleton, and specifically on the end or one of the ends of that carbon skeleton, you have to have an oxygen double bonded to it, as well as a hydrogen on the side. Now, when people usually talk about aldehydes in perfumery, they're referring to a very specific subset of aldehydes, and those are the aliphatic or straight chain aldehydes. This is when your carbon skeleton is simply a straight line or a straight chain of carbon atoms, and it's on one of those terminal ends that you have your aldehyde group. Now, perfumers, trying to be a bit more simple, like to simply name these things with the number of carbons in that chain. So for example, aldehyde C9, which smells a bit like orange peel, that's got nine carbons in the chain, and then the aldehyde group on the end. Or aldehyde C12, on the other hand, that smells kind of a little bit waxy, a little bit soapy. Again, that's got 12 carbon atoms in the chain, and then the aldehyde group is on the end. Now, aldehydes were used quite widely at the beginning of the 1900s, and part of the reason that we often associate them with kind of soapy smells is they were used quite fashionably at the time in soap fragrances, and even to this day, if you go and smell something like an imperial leather soap, you will notice that soapy smell, which is partially down to aldehydes. It was also an overdose of these aldehydes in the famous perfume Chanel Number no. 5, which made it so groundbreaking at the time because no one had really done that in perfumery before. Now, around this time in 1908, another molecule was discovered, and this molecule was called gamma undecalactone. Now, this molecule also smelled a little bit waxy, but when you diluted it down far enough, it started to smell like peaches. So the manufacturers and the people who sold this, they decided to go and sell this as something called aldehyde C14. And part of the reason was because calling these molecules aldehyde C and then a number was kind of trendy at the time. And apparently another reason was because they actually didn't want to reveal what the molecule actually was. So they kind of wanted to throw people off the trail as such as calling it aldehyde C14. Whereas if you went and made that a straight chain aldehyde molecule, which you would expect aldehyde C14 to be from the naming, then you'd actually get a completely different molecule, which helped keep their molecule a secret. Now, you also got to remember at the time that chemistry was a lot less advanced than it is now, which means if you were, as a chemist, given an unknown sample, it would be much harder to determine the actual structure of what it actually was. Now, the thing about this gamma undecalactone is it's not actually an aldehyde at all. If you look at the molecule, it, yes, does still have the double bond oxygen, but that's about where the similarities end. It's also got this other oxygen next to it, which aldehydes don't have, and it doesn't have the hydrogen which it needs, and it's most certainly not on the end of the molecule. That means it's a lactone, not an aldehyde. So essentially the naming is just completely false. But that didn't stop other similar molecules popping up. Next there was aldehyde C16, which smells a little bit like strawberries, aldehyde C18, which smells a little bit like coconut, and even aldehyde C20, which smells a little bit like raspberries. But the thing about these molecules is none of them were actually aldehydes. In fact, for the aliphatic, those straight chain aldehydes, which actually give an aldehydic smell, it turns out after 15 carbons or so in that chain, you can't even smell the molecule anymore anyway. So aldehyde C16, 18, and 20, even if you did go and make those molecules, they wouldn't have a smell. Now, I wanted to see for myself how these two different classes of aldehydes, the real ones and the fake ones, how different they actually smelled from each other in a perfume. So what I decided to do was make two test perfumes, one for each class of molecules. 
what I did was I took my Dusk Perfume base, which I made in a previous video, so I'll link that if you wanna see the formula for it. I took that and added just some very small amounts of both real aldehydes and fake aldehydes to that base to see what kind of effect they would have on a perfume. So for the one with the real aldehydes, added a little bit of aldehyde C9, C10, and C12 lauric. And then for the one with the fake aldehydes, added some aldehyde C14, aldehyde C16, and aldehyde C18, none of which are actually aldehydes. So I made up those formulas, and now I've got them here for you to actually smell them and let you know the difference in how these two categories smell. So we're going to start off with the real aldehydes. Now to me, the effect of these actual aliphatic aldehydes is essentially one of a kind of sparkling effect. Imagine the difference in taste almost of sparkling water to plain water. It kind of adds that sparkle and it also adds some kind of, let's say, citrus peel, slightly waxy nuances as well. So it really kind of lifts up the perfume and makes it a little bit more fresh, a little bit more kind of shiny as such. And because I dose these quite low, luckily they don't overpower everything too much. I can see if you have the right composition that these could fit quite well into your perfume. But you do have to be careful with these because they are really strong. And in some perfumes they can just clash with the other things or otherwise they can also take over and just make the whole thing smell way too waxy. And that sparkling effect isn't necessarily always what you want. Now then let's smell the fake aldehydes. So to me the difference is quite clear. You don't have that kind of fresher, more sparkling effect at all. With these fake aldehydes, I actually think the whole thing feels a lot heavier. It's almost more of a kind of biscuity leaning smell. It just smells a bit more thick. And you do have these kind of coconutty nuances, probably mostly from the C18 shining through. And you have this kind of peachy things as well. You can smell from the C14. And if you smell hard enough, you can also smell the C16 in there, which gives you this kind of, uh, it's kind of a strawberry sweetness, but it's not necessarily like a realistic strawberry. It's more of kind of like a synthetic strawberry flavoring kind of thing. And the difference in these is that these ones give you a slightly fruity smell and it reminds you much more of a kind of lipstick smell. And because these things are used, especially in kind of cheaper uh, tropical smelling perfumes and that kind of things a lot, um, they can be a little bit reminiscent of that as well. Now, the thing is about these, I also have some which I put on yesterday onto the scent strips and the real aldehydes they've completely vanished. So they're more kind of top to top mid notes. Whereas those fake aldehydes, you can still smell those. And if anything, I think they're a little bit clearer after a day. So these fake aldehydes, they're actually more kind of mid or mid to base notes. And they definitely last longer in the perfume. So in conclusion, both are pretty powerful. Even when dosed lowly, you can still smell them quite clearly. The actual real aldehydes are a bit more kind of fresh, sparkling, waxy, soapy, whereas the fake aldehydes, these are more kind of fruity, tropical leaning, kind of sweet, kind of lipstick smell, that kind of thing. Now, do let me know down in the comments if you have any of these aldehydes yourself and what your thoughts are, if you like them or if you don't. I know that both of these classes of perfumery aroma chemicals can be a little bit polarizing. And aside from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next week with another video all about perfumery. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description.